Welcome back YouTube. The uh, purpose of this little video is uh, I've been getting a lot of questions from people. You know, like in my videos I'll mention uh, NATO spec weaponry and uh, NATO calibers and things of that nature and generally uh, talking about keeping your caliber selection to a standard which would involve the NATO standard and basically uh, what I want to do here is try to explain exactly what that means to some of you that may not know um, to the best of my ability. Basically, NATO countries um, hold their caliber selection to a set of standards. And basically, the reason that's done is so that every country has interchangeable ammunition. It uh, makes, you know, um, logistics and supply a lot easier thing to uh, overcome. And it's, you know, it's just overall a good idea. It keeps everyone honest. And uh, in addition to a lot of the rules that they uh, have to follow in terms of the way ammunition is made and everything of that nature. Um, supply wise, like I said, it's just a good idea. I have here in front of me uh, the most common military calibers that uh, the United States military is uh, using very quickly. Right here we have the 50 BMG. BMG stands for Browning Machine Gun. All right, This cartridge has been around quite some time. This is what we use in our uh, heavy machine guns like the M2 and our uh, s sniper rifles. We have a lot of sniper rifles that are chambered in uh, 50 cal. There's a few uh, models out there. Here we have 7.62 by 51 uh, millimeter. The commercial equivalent would be 308. The two rounds generally are not interchangeable. Well, they're interchangeable in the sense that they may work, but it's one of those things I'll explain in a minute. But this is our uh, medium sniping round and also our medium machine gun round. Uh, the 240 Bravo fires this cartridge, and a lot of our sniper systems utilize this cartridge. Um, lots of drop tab tables available, and that's one of the uh, nice uh, points of having a 308 bolt gun, or in the case of this video, a 762 by 51. Like I said, readily available drop tables, lots of data out there, plenty of brass laying around, lots of uh, bullet selections, so great cartridge. Here we have a 9 pellet double alt buckshot, 12 gauge. This is military overrun buckshot that we have in stock here. Um, basically, as for your 12 gauges, all right, 12 gauge is a standard uh, loading for NATO shotguns. Here we have 5.56. Five, um, this is our standard rifle cartridge. This also feeds the 249 saw squad automatic weapon. Um, great little round. It's accurate out to 600 meters or so. I believe the point range on an AR is about 550 meters. Area point or area range is around 800 meters. So a very capable uh, round. Nice and light. You can carry lots of them. And for pistols and uh, other special weapons like MP5s and other entry uh, special operations type weaponry, we have the 9mm Parabellum, 9x19 Parabellum. Uh, parabellum literally means for war. Uh, this particular cartridge was designed by the Germans to, uh, in conjunction with the uh, Luger and I do believe they had some broom handles chambered in 9mm. A uh, relatively powerful cartridge in the plus P offerings with uh, heavier projectiles. Um, any handgun in decent condition is going to be able to handle the NATO spec ammunition just fine. All right, so we're going to start with uh, small arms. We're going to go with uh, handguns. In terms of handguns in the NATO sense, and especially with, in the American sense, you're looking at the M9 Beretta. Now this particular one is a 92FS, which is a civilian version of the Beretta, but at their, at their core, they're the same exact thing. Um, parts, grips, basically anything you would find on a military spec M9 to be interchangeable with this handgun. All right, they're excellent handguns. If they're fed proper magazines, they work just fine. Very accurate, and uh, they do the job. Also, a very common um, handgun that you'll see in America, uh, mainly with law enforcement, is the Glock. Now, depending on the jurisdiction, the type of officers and things like that, or whatever that uh, particular department may require, uh, these can be in a variety of calibers. But the most common one you're probably going to experience in America is going to be the 40 Smith & Wesson. Now, while that is not a NATO caliber, if you had a Glock in 9mm, uh, the chances for you finding ammunition for it in a uh, you know, very hairy situation are probably uh, very good. 
All right, so again, common caliber, nine millimeter, a Glock or a Beretta in that caliber, and you're good to go. We'll talk more about handguns in just a second. We're gonna move on. All right, I have here the same Olympic that I showed you the other day. Now, in terms of small arms, in particular rifles like this AR, um, parts are generally going to be very interchangeable from the GI models to the civilian models. Uh, the bolt carrier, the sear pack, you should relatively be able to drop in without too much trouble. Uh, now granted, I'm not implying that you do that, but in terms of parts availability, uh, you pretty much are crazy not to have an AR just because there are so many of them out there. If something happens and you happen to find a few laying around the side of the road or in a burnt up truck or whatever the case may be, it's always going to be a good idea to be able to salvage parts. And with this being a, a very common rifle design, it's always a good idea to have one. All right. And of course, the subject of ARs has been beat into the ground, so we're going to move on. In terms of shotguns, here I've got a uh, M590A1 Mossberg 12 gauge. These are very common shotguns. Now, in terms of the nomenclature of the military ones, I'm not sure if it's really that much different than the civilian counterpart um, because there's really not that much special about them. I know that uh, the military shotguns that we had in Iraq, we had a 590A that was an automatic, and basically you could hold down the trigger and pump it, and it would fire you know, in an automatic sense with each pump. But generally across the board, uh, if you find these laying around, it's always a good idea to have yourself a Mossberg shotgun laying around just because uh, with the military they are very common and this particular model is actually a great one to have. So that covers your 12 gauge. All right. In terms of bolt action rifles, um, if you're going to get, if you're going to build a sniper rifle or something of that nature, you know, to, to just to use the 762 by 51 NATO, they sell bolt guns that are actually chambered in 762 by 51 NATO as, a, as opposed to the 308 counterpart and uh, they're definitely out there and they're relatively common and that's a great system to be able to utilize that ammunition if it's laying around and uh, this particular gun here being a Remington 700 is a very common variant of rifle to see in the military, in the American military uh, and it is an American made rifle so definitely a good thing to have laying around in terms of automatics, any uh, automatic rifle of any sorts, semi-automatic rifle or full auto otherwise, if it has a 762 by 51 uh, cut chamber, you're good to go. I want to very, very quickly hit on the uh, FN, FNP45. The reason I want to mention this is because this is one of the pistol designs that was turned in for trials to replace the M9 Beretta. And this is a 45 ACP, a full capacity 45. 15 shots in the magazine, one in the chamber. Threaded barrel for suppressors. It's got night sights, double single action, Takaki mechanism. Um, basically, same sort of layout that you'd expect on the Beretta. Um, in terms of the outlook as to whether or not they're going to be able to switch to this or a similar design, or the 45 in general, uh, at this point is kind of an unknown uh, theory. But I just want to mention this type of handgun because if you're wanting to kind of stay within that uh, choice of calibers, it wouldn't hurt to have a solid 45, whether it's a 1911 pattern gun or something like this. Now, granted, I don't know if this is ever going to make it into the hands of GIs. It's a solid gun. I mean, I, I would like to see it being fielded. It's, you know, a great setup. But as of right now, with the administration being as what it is, I don't expect this uh, particular gun to be in our hands anytime soon, but it's just something to think about.